안녕하십니까? 니콜라스입니다. In today's video, we are going to take a look at the future of CSS. The Google I.O. 2022 just finished and it was packed with sessions and keynotes about browsers and the future of the web. Really cool, super new or coming soon CSS features were announced. I made a list of the ones that I like the most and that is exactly what I want to share with you today. Color Mix allows you to mix colors on the browser and it looks like this. Here we are getting a color that is 50% red and 50% blue. But if we want to, we can also choose the ratios of the mix by specifying a percent. So here we would be mixing 30% red and 70% blue. And like it was said on the keynote, Color Mix is especially useful to derive other colors from a brand color. Maybe mixing it with white or with black to make it lighter or darker by saving the brand color in a CSS variable and using it later inside of color mix. Accent color allows you to change the color of those HTML elements that have been historically very hard to customize like radio buttons or check boxes, progress bars and range sliders. If we want to change the colors of those elements, we have to do it by ourselves manually by changing the background color and the border color, the hover states, the focus states, among many other things that is hard to remember. With accent color, all we have to do is tell to the browser what is the accent color of those elements. And the browser will change the background color, the border color and all those things for us. If we have these elements, for example, and I want to make them pink or red or blue, all I have to do is change the accent color property and with one line, all their styles will be changed. For text to be easy to read, there has to be a good contrast between the background color and the text color. Black on top of blue or white on top of yellow does not look good. Instead of us having to pick what color has the best contrast with our background color, we can instead use color contrast to let the browser do it for us. Here we have a box with a background color of red. Now what we want to do is we want to set the color of the text of that box to whatever color the browser thinks has a better contrast with red. So we call color contrast and we give it the red color. Then the browser will see if white has a good contrast with red or if black has a good contrast with red. The best color with the best contrast is going to be what the text color of our box will be. Color contrast by default is going to return either white or black, no more. But this is already good because the browser knows what looks good. So for example, the browser is not going to give you black text on top of a blue background or yellow text on top of a yellow background. But that is not the best part. Instead of only getting white or black from color contrast, we can also provide options for the browser to choose from. The way you use it is like this. First, we write the background color. In this case, it will be blue. Then we do VS or versus, and then we write the color options that the browser can choose from. So here the browser will check and choose among the colors pink, yellow and green to see who has the best contrast against a background of color blue. And then the browser is going to give us the winner color. Inert is not really a CSS property, it's more like an HTML attribute. Inert allows you to basically freeze sections of your page. Any HTML element with the inert attribute will not receive any clicks, focus events, interactions, nothing from the user. This is very useful if, for example, you want to freeze a button after the user clicked it once. Or if you are sending a form and you don't want the user to click anywhere else, you can freeze the whole form by adding the inert attribute to the form HTML element. Now, before we continue with the rest of the list, please remember that if you want to learn to code for free with me in Hangugo, then please click the link below because there we have free courses on JavaScript, Python, Go, React, React Native, Redux, GraphQL, among many, many other things, all of them for free. Click the link below and I will see you there. Has allows you to style a parent depending if it contains a specific child. This wasn't possible before. Before, we could only style a child if it was inside of a parent. Here, we could apply styles to a button if it was inside of a form, but we couldn't add styles to the form if it contained a button. 
has completely fixes this. To add styles to a form, if it contains a button, all we have to do is this. And that is super, super useful. You can now, for example, add styles to a list item if the list item contains a link. Or you can change the way a link looks like if the link is around an image. Or you can go a little crazy and you can change the style of a form if the form has a button and the button has the mouse on top of it. There are two viewport units that are very well known, VW and VH. VW gives you the viewport width and VH gives you the viewport height. Viewport is the area or the window from which the website is being seen. In a mobile screen, since we can't resize windows in mobile, 100 VH will give you the total height of the screen and 100 VW will give you the total width of the screen. But now we have even more units for mobile sizes. We have LVH, which is largest viewport height. We have SVH, which is the smallest viewport height. And we have DVH, which is dynamic viewport height. Largest will be the size of the screen without the navigation bar. Smallest will be the size of the screen with the navigation bar. And dynamic will be a size that changes depending if the navigation bar is shown or not. This code might look very familiar to you. When we do CSS, we have to repeat ourselves sometimes when we want to make sure that we only apply some styles to the children of certain parents. In our example, we repeat the nav selector three times when we want to target the list inside of the nav and the list item inside of the list inside of the nav. The nest rule allows you to turn our code from what we just seen to something like this. As you can see, it looks much, much better, is way easier to read and we don't have to repeat the nav even once. We write it one time and then we write the children inside of it, nested. And what we used so far is the nested selector sign, which is this ampersand sign. But we can also use the add nest rule. The add nest rule gives us more power when nesting selectors that do not start with an ampersand. With the nest rule, we could do something like this. And that is the same as doing this. As you can see, the ampersand sign becomes a placeholder which is very cool because you can do very exciting stuff. The scope rule allows you to scope your styles or basically isolate them into their own style bubble. Take this code, for example. As you can see, here we are changing the styles of the navigation and the title class depending on them being inside of a header or inside of an aside tag. Or for example, if we want to create a dark theme and then maybe a lighter theme and maybe a purple theme, we could do something like this. As you can see, a scope makes it so much easier to write, isolate and think about our styles. So please compare what we just did using scope and dark, light and purple theme with what we would have to do if we didn't use a scope at all. Now you tell me what looks better and you tell me what is easier to read and understand. Before the container rule, CSS elements could only respond to changes in the width of the window. This is how we do responsive design. If the screen becomes smaller, then we modify and move things inside of the page. But that was only by listening to the changes in the width of the window. With the container rule, elements can listen for changes not on the window, but on their parents. Here we are creating a container. We name it header container and we say that we want to know about the changes to its size. Then we say that when the header container has a minimum width of 600 pixels, the display property of the navigation must be flex. With the custom media rule, we can create media query variables and just reuse them. Here we are creating dark mode variable, light mode variable, landscape, portrait, iPhone variable, whatever we want. And then all we have to do is reuse them when we're writing our media queries. Without this new feature, our code would look something like this. There will be a lot of copy pasting and maybe many mistakes. Now you tell me what looks best. You know, please let me know in the comments which one is your favorite CSS property. Mine are all the color ones. I like accent color, I like contrast color, I like color mixing. I think they're pretty, pretty cool. And I really like the media query variables. They are very, very sexy. Let me know what you think. What was your favorite? As always, stay happy, stay free. It's Kimchi, Kamsamida, Sananheyo. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.